So it's been a while since we've done a fresh YouTube video. The last one I uploaded was just bits and bobs that I put together just for the sake of uploading something. Um, what we have got is we have now pretty much finished the inner sill, which goes on down there. And all that has been handmade to suit, which has replaced the original part uh, that was on there. Today's job is I'm going to do something uh, mechanical. I'm going to strip and rebuild the distributor and equip it for electronic ignition. Uh, I'll explain why I'm going to do that later on. First things first, I'm going to take this pipe off and I can then get to the distributor itself. So this is a Lucas 25D distributor. It features automatic advance and retard, which is controlled by a vacuum within this chamber here. It's very simple how it works, but it will take a while for your head to get around it. But simply, on this shaft here, there's a square. And if I put that back on, I'm not sure if that's going on right. There we go. Uh, as this spins anti clockwise, the points, which is these bits here, will open and close every time it works, every time it hits one of them square faces. So for one revolution of this, the engine has turned two times. So if you're ticking over at, at, uh, at 1,000 revs a minute, that's open 4,000 times. When, you, when this is all wired up and you've got your screwdriver in there and open it, you would see a spark. So when there is a break in the circuit, like now, the wire, which is on here, that goes on here, is also goes to the other end of the ignition coil, the plus end, whichever end, uh, the plus end, that side, whichever, it's clearly marked. When the negative goes to earth, when this sensors, when, when that's broke, this will fire 12,000 volts down a, 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 a HT lead to the top central part of the distributor. <coughs> that then contacts onto here, then that will fire uh, a spark on whichever uh, cylinder it's closest to at the time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place this in the vise, not too tight obviously, it's only aluminium, and then what we're going to do is we're going to strip the condenser and the points and we're going to fit a Luminition Optronic system. So essentially everything that's within my hand is going to get replaced. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because if you saw where it was fitted on the car it is very difficult to set these up because these have to be set within probably 15 thou at the maximum uh, gap. And it's, so you'd have to take the entire distributor off to get it set up uh, which is a bit of a pain. So we're going to replace it all with the goodies within this box. Not that box. It's all going to get replaced with the goodies inside this inside this packet here. So the bit that we want is going to be this bit here. That. So I'm going to get that fitted and I'll come back when it's in. This is really foolproof in the way it fits. It can only fit one way and it goes where the points originally went. And then you simply get the screw that you took out, which is that one, and the washer, swing washer even, and put it back in its place. Like, not 
sun. So that's now in place where the points originally sat. Just for the sake of keeping it safe, the screw that hold the that held the condenser on will be screwed back inside that hole. And then now I need to work out what I shall do with the wiring. Because this is where it gets interesting. What we've got to do is we've got to work out how to plug this little beauty in. But first, we must fit this plastic, this plastic bung, if you like. Fit that into the I'll fit that over the wires. So I'm guessing that will go around there. And this will go over here. on the wrong way around. I had always intended to uh, convert this to electronic ignition. For the simple fact I mentioned earlier of the wonderful access situation that we simply haven't got. Right, so with that in there out of the way, I now need to work out which way round them three wires are going to go into this plastic uh, connector here. So that's going to go in like that. So we've got simply blue blue, black and red. So blue will go on that side, black in the middle, and red on this side. That's them in place and then they can now Go on to the when we're ready. Right, so next thing I need to finish this off and then put it back in is the chopper. So this bit of plastic here uh, will, is the bit that will break the contact between the between the the. Uh, the, the 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 beam, the infrared beam. That's not gonna right. Still not going on right. And finally, to finish that off, the rotor arm fits back on as it did before. And that is one distributor ready. And that will turn like that. But we need to tie that wire away. Just to get trapped. Like that. And that would, would not be a good idea. So just to uh, 
Just to give you a picture again, we're working in that hole there. So that just shows you how how little amount how, how little space there is in this engine bay. Directly beneath the heater control valve. And we've now got to set this back up. So first things first, we will put the distributor back inside the hole. I've got to to turn the <coughs> turn the rotor arm to get it to line up with the there we go get it to line up with the the gear inside the camshaft right so I'm sat roughly there if you look on the on the block, I have actually marked the block where it was set, so we've got a rough idea of where we're working to. This is going to be a nightmare. So next thing, these three wires on here. Yeah. Right, what we'll do next is we'll introduce the the gubbins behind it. So I'll zoom out. So this is the box. Really couldn't be simpler. Earth box. That goes to the distributor. That goes to the original coil wire, the uh, original distributor wire and then that pink one goes to the coil yeah simple as that so my next job is to work out which one of these wires on the fuse box is ignition live and we do that simply by placing that on a known good earth which will be uh, well, probably there and seeing which of these has got power, that's got sweet FA, nothing, can't have n none of it can have nothing because I know it's all working. How can it have n no power to it? Mm. Right, so that one. Is good. And so is no. Something's got to have power to it, or it's nothing to work. Right, so that's got. It's just these top ones. So basically, when I've found a wire that's live, I plug the red wire into whichever's live. In fact, I don't see why that can't go on the fuse, but uh, onto the coil, because we know that's live, don't we? On the sheet, it does clearly say that the red wire, which is, I don't know, that one, goes to the fuse box the coil. Right, we'll see. Oh and also I'd like to point out that that is where I've mounted the box on the front uh, on the front panel that goes across there. Right, so everything's in place for now. Piggybacked off the fuse box down there, you can't see that to get the red wire for the power to the gubbins in there. That's connected up, that's connected up, violet wire to the negative side of the coil, original wire to the positive side of the coil, that's HTDs on rotor arms in, 
that's now redundant so let's see if we're as good as we think we are if it goes bang then uh, Decent battery on now, let's see what happens. So with all this in place, I'm going to leave it now. Um, it's it will start hopefully. I'll try and start it. Try and just do quickly. Pure indication that it's set up. That started better than it ever has done since I've had it. Bear in mind it is slightly warm. Um, so I want to end this video now, and the next video that's going to be uploaded onto YouTube will be stripping the engine down to replace the head gasket.